Hey everyone, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood animal stroke consultant. So it's it's been a quick minute. Let's well, put 18 months of quick minutes. So you're gonna ask where I've been, and I'm gonna probably gonna tell you. So last 18 months have been tumultuous, interesting, difficult, hell. Uh, we went from the old backdrop to the new backdrop. We'll explain that. So during the middle of COVID, my landlord at the time uh, attempted to illegally evict me. Uh, I ended up moving into a, a new location, which was uh, not conducive to making videos. So I just was not able to make videos physically. I didn't have another location I could go to to make videos. Um, and I wasn't really in the right space, mind, headspace to make videos. So hence, I didn't make any videos. Um, that being said, I'm back. So let's just talk about where I've been and sort of what's going on. Uh, what's going on is this. Uh, I'm now able to make content yet again. And it's my intention to start making regular content, respond to your comments, and, and be uh, a positive influence. Not really a role model. Don't want to follow my misadventures. They were a little bit ridiculous. Uh, what else has happened? Um, I, since we last spoke, I had a voluntary admission for six or seven days to the local health, um, mental health care facility, or health unit, so to speak, to, for medication adjustment. I've had at least one other medication adjustment that I can remember, potentially a third. Uh, I'm a patient representative on a committee at the local hospital that, that deals with uh, mental health care concerns between the emergency department and the community mental health or the emergency department uh, and the uh, inpatient uh, mental health unit in the local hospital. So uh, I can help use some of my experiences to help benefit other people. Uh, both because I previously have worked in mental health and now I've been a patient in the mental health system uh, due to major depressive disorder and PTSD uh, due to various factors. Um, another thing I'm able to, or willing, able, I have, I have, I have the headspace to talk about now um, that I didn't really have before because I was not in the right headspace. Uh, for the past couple of years now, I've had an ongoing legal dispute with my employer I had at the time when I had my stroke uh, due to the, the highly flawed, in my opinion, my observation, my judgment, my perception, their allegations, um, because they haven't proved to be legally true, because their allegations um, in front of a tribunal. Uh, what's not an allegation is I had my value referred to as that of one you sock and 13 golf balls. I also had my value uh, referred to uh, to that of a package of smokes, meaning cigarettes. Uh, the same individual did this. Uh, the first time they referred to my value as one you sock and 13 golf balls, it was in an email that referred to me by name and went public uh, a, in the company I worked for at the time. Uh, the time when I was referred to as having a pack of smokes, um, that was in a birthday card, which I received after my stroke, because my, my, my actual birthday is after my what we're going to celebrate shortly my new adopted birthday which is my fifth birthday since my stroke those are not allegations those are facts those things did actually happen the same individual did it twice um, i have receipts for both of those and they happened so uh, my return to work process and the working in the workplace after my stroke was not beneficial to me uh, in my perception, my judgment, my observation uh, was done on, agen on an agenda that was uh, heavily biased, heavily prejudicial, uh, one that was in intended to make me leave the workplace. Uh, it was one that, in my opinion, uh, my perception, uh, my judgment, um, and again, my allegations, uh, was one that was one of bullying, harassment, and discrimination. Unfortunately, I at some point, I'll, have, I'll, have, I'll either be able to talk about it or I won't, depending on the outcome of the legal process. And when I have the ability to talk about it, I will let you know. And when I have the ability not to talk about it, I'll also let you know I can no longer talk about that. But we'll get, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Let's just be honest here. So, however, the things I'm speaking of just now, they actually did occur. Um, and I have receipts for them. And that individual knows they did. So that's okay. Uh, other things occurred other than that again in my allegations about what did occur 
uh, and how that impacted me. What I do know is, is I was in my perception, observation, and judgment, and my experiences, I was forced out of the workplace, um, and it made it was was the workplace was made unsafe for me due to the actions of others, or the inactions of others, or the attitudes of others. Um, anyways, enough about that. Uh, that's caused me enough sleepless nights. Um, other things have happened. Uh, we'll get into those at some point in another video at another time. But this video is really about me celebrating my fifth birthday and, and trying to be a positive influence. Again, not a role model because my misadventures is something no one really wants to repeat. But I try not to be too morbid about the anniversary or the, the my new birthday of the stroke because a stroke is really a life-ending event. Whether it actually does end your life physically or not, it's a life-ending event. You have the life before and you have the life after. They are two distinctly separate and unique events. Um, as much as I would prefer and want my life to be exactly identical before my stroke, that's never going to happen. And I have to deal with the reality I now have this new life um, that I have to find meaning in. Um, at one point, I was so disheveled and had no found meaning in, in my new life. I was trying to seek out, now I live in Canada, so this is a Canadian experience. So anyone that doesn't live in Canada, if you don't know what you're talking about, um, I tried to seek out medical assistance in dying because it, it is legal in Canada. My psychiatrist agreed that I met the physical benchmarks um, in addition to the mental health benchmarks, but he wasn't willing to advance my name further than him. Um, and that was his decision. That is what it is. I'm no longer seeking medical assistance in dying, but at one point I was doing that um, because I was despondent and the PTSD and major depression and, and other things were going on in my world. And and I just, I, I felt completely hopeless. Luckily, I had a therapist, or not therapist, but a social worker um, and a psychiatrist that, that really are, are, are skilled and, and excellent at what they do, and they help save me. They, they, they physically, um, administratively, for all purposes, save my life. Um, in fact, he did save my life because he formed me um, in the summer of 2020. Um, I required a... Um, an involuntary hospitalization for six days or seven days. Um, so I'm, I'm very familiar with some of the struggles that come in a mental health aspect after a stroke. I also have other struggles. I have a proprioception issue that pops up from time to time. I still suffer or deal with post-stroke fatigue from time to time. Um, I still uh, have to deal with foot drop occasionally, um, especially when I get fatigued or retired. I still have my communication def deficits. Uh, I still have um, other just sort of general debris of the stroke. Now, after your stroke, you may not have everything that I have. You may have some speech deficits. You may not. You may have a spastic bladder. You may not. You may have difficulty walking, meaning you're paralyzed on one side. You may not. You may need to get an implant um, uh, to help regulate seizures or, or migraines or, or not. You may need to get uh, glasses that have prisms in them to help deal with vision issues. Or you may not. There are, unfortunately, there's no cookie cutter for a stroke or a brain injury. It, it just sort of happens and you're just sort of required to pick up the pieces thereafter. Uh, you know, in, in my case uh, and in other friends I have in the States and a friend I have in England, we are all required to leave our former jobs for various reasons post-stroke. And, and it's difficult because a lot of your identity is tied up with your job like I was doing this and this is my identity so I that's a, a piece I, I still have to deal with at times uh, and and it's slowly getting easier to deal with other people their job was you know a, a very large component of their life and you've now had to be separated from your your former source of employment which you've done for many many years and 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 that can be an issue uh, in many ways that, that can that can cause mental health difficulties um, because my former landlord uh, attempted to illegally evict me I was literally a stone's throw from homelessness um, and at one point my social worker and I were considering starting the sort of pre check-in process for the local homeless shelter just in case that happened um, so I, 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 I'm familiar with a lot of the things that people talk about post-stroke, financial instability, potential homelessness, loss of job, loss of 
loss of yourself. I, I've totally been there. I've lost myself. I'm starting to redevelop myself. I'm starting to find myself again. So I try not to be morbid um, or morose or despondent on my new birthday. I try to celebrate it as a birthday. Um, sure, it's odd. People say, you're turning five? I mean, I'm turning five. Let me, let, let me sing you the song of my people. Uh, so this is just a little bit of what I've been dealing with over the last 18 months. I know it's been a quick minute. 18 months a quick minute since I last made a video and I'm sorry for the delay but there were just circumstances and technical difficulties beyond my control that would allow this um, YouTube channel to sort of have any meaning at that time um, I have responded to a few comments here and there I'm gonna make some some content about some of the comments that have been left uh, because they, they have some real-world implications and, and for everyone that I've missed I hope you're well um, you know, uh, I'll try to remember some names for the next video of the stroke folk that have been following me. And if you've been following me for the last five years, it's, I'm so thankful you've been stuck around. Uh, I noticed even though I have not been making content in a year, people have still been leaving comments. And thank you to you as people. People have still been subscribing. And again, thank you to you uh, as well. And, and it's, it's sort of my goal to get back on track and start making regular content and uh, have the ability to, to interact with you. Uh, provide some insight, some benefits, some, some useful information, uh, potential some strategies to help deal with your post-stroke messiness as I've tried to deal with my post-stroke messiness. And we'll just you know, sort of help each other out. So on that note, if you like what you've been watching and, and you'd like to see more content, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you happen to see someone that could be you or someone around you that appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost their sense of balance, Someone who's having vision problems, they can't see out of one eye, they can only see in grayscale, they only see a little dot in the world. Someone has an immediate pronounced facial droop, there's a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles on one side. Um, someone who can't raise their arms equally above their head or at all. Uh, someone who has communication issues, uh, speech issues, they're stuttering their speech, they're slurring their words, they're unable to talk, they, they have very delayed or pressured speech. Um, and please place that person in a position of comfort uh, and immediately call 911. Something so simple can save a life.